Hey friends, Susan Gregory here with day 20 of Your Journey in Faith. And I just wanted to say, even though we are drawing to a close for this series of lessons, there is still so much more in your journey. We are not finished with our journey. We walk by faith. And when we look at the word and and our directions and our instructions from the Lord, we are always on the journey. We're always walking with him. We're always in action and making our faith make a difference in our lives and the lives of others. So you're on this journey, this little part of your journey, but the journey goes on. And what a joy we have to be able to do that. Let me open us in prayer and then we'll get started with today's lesson. Father, thank you that we can join in this journey in faith with you. What a joy it is, Father, to be able to come to you with open hearts, open minds, and asking you and knowing that you will fulfill the word when you say you will teach us, that you will guide us, that you will give us wisdom, that you will reveal your truth to us because you love us, you care for us, and we are your children. You want the very best for us. And so, Father, we thank you for that. Thank you for this journey that we've been on. And and thank you, Lord, for the way that you have been revealing your word to us, that we are moving from that sense knowledge kind of faith to that deep, deep knowledge faith, that that scriptural knowledge, that faith knowledge, that revelation knowledge that we can have. And we only get it because of you, because you are inside of us. We are, we are surrendering our hearts to you. We're bowing to you and we receive what you have for us. So Father, again today, help us to understand, help us to get these truths deeper inside of us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So in today's lesson, we want to go a little deeper and become fully convinced. Now that is a goal. We want to become fully convinced that the Lord's word is true. And we are moving, we are being transformed. Our minds are being renewed by the word, by the the changing that is going on, the teaching we're receiving, but it's getting in the word. And so today we're going to go deeper into the amazing truth that almost seems too good to be true that Jesus teaches. So let's look at what he says in John 14, 12 through 14. And again, we want to look at these words and not just wisp by them and, you know, let them go in one ear and out the other. We want to really embrace this, get these truths in us. So most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than these will he do because I go to my father and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Those are the words of our Lord Jesus. Now, this is sometimes hard to believe. And so we want to spend the time today reviewing this again, because it's not a once and done thing. This is something that we are constantly needing to renew our minds to these truths. But I wanted to share an experience with you that I've had just recently that I thought was such a great illustration for me. And I hope it will help you as well as I'm going to give you some tips about getting these truths deeply rooted in your heart. So let me just share a little experience I had with you. So I do this work full time and it's how I earn my living and, you know, pay for my obligations and all those kinds of things. You know, we all need money and and income. And so I do it by writing books. It's one of the things that I do. And I also have the online courses that I teach that um, people pay for. This one, of course, is a complimentary course. But um, but one of the ways is I, I write books and I receive royalty checks. So when books are sold, I get a small portion of that. And it's, it's um, you know, not a huge ton of money, but it's part of my income. And I get these quarterly royalty checks from the sale of my books that, that the publishers uh, produce and market and publish. 
So I get these every quarter. Well, I was supposed to receive one about a month ago and it hadn't come. So I, I, um, after it hadn't come after, you know, a few days, I called the publisher and I just mentioned, I said, you know, it, it didn't come. And they said, oh, well, there was a, there was a problem with the address. So we've, we've got it back and we'll remail it to you. And I said, okay, great. So then it still didn't come. And I thought, okay. And so then I contacted the publisher again and they said, oh, we are so sorry. The post office sent it back because we had another incorrect address. So we made all the necessary changes and they mailed it again. And, and, and I, it's on its way. So this is the thing. And this is what I, what the truth that this little life situation is an example of. Jesus says that we are to ask and then believe that we receive, even before it shows up. So here I know for sure that this royalty check is on the way. I know for sure. Now, it's had some complications. Some some things have held it up. But I know for sure that it's coming. I don't doubt. I don't, I'm not calling them and saying, do I really get the royalty check? Is it, is it true? You know, please, will you please send me the royalty check or please make out the royalty check? No, because I know for sure that it's coming. And so I, you know, there's some things I need to do. There's been some uh, holdups, some complications. And so I'm, I need to be, do my part to notify the publisher. And I had to call the post office and get some things straightened out. But it didn't mean that the check was not already mine. I didn't have it in my hand yet, but I knew that it was coming. That is the same kind of assurance that we want that Jesus tells us to have when we ask anything in his name. That we have the assurance that he will provide. That is the system. That is the pattern. He says, anything that you want, ask and you will receive it. So what do we do? We get into God's word. What are the promises? And this is the thing too. Think of, the, of God's word. It is our covenant. It is the agreement that he has made with us. It is our contract. It's like you give your life to Christ. You follow the Lord. You keep his commandments and I will give you everything, all the promises that are in this contract, in this covenant. It is the new covenant. So when you read those words in the scriptures, when you find the promises of God, then take them as as truth. It's as much truth as a, the checks in the mail. It's on its way. You're going to get it. So the first thing we do is we go in the word. What is the word teaching? What is it telling us about whatever need it is that we have? And then the next step in getting the, these truths deeply in us and making sure we understand is we want to study it out. And so there may be some things, some some tools that you want to use, some books, some courses, some things that will give you deeper understanding that will help that revel that revelation truth come into your heart even deeper because we're in the process of renewing our mind to the truths of God. And sometimes it helps us to have some additional support in that, some other explanations. God honors teachers. It's part of the fivefold ministry. We need teachers to help us. And so you can use different tools to help you really get it. So then you get into that word and you keep studying that word, keep looking at that word until you become fully convinced, until you can say, okay, it is mine. It is already mine. God's promises are true. I put my trust in him. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't need to know how that it's going to happen. What I do need to know is that God's word is true. I put my faith in God's word. That is the revelation faith, that, that, that strong faith 
that doesn't make sense to the world. It doesn't make sense to people who don't fully believe. But you want to get to the point where you do fully believe. And I'd encourage you, if you talk about these things to people, make sure that you are talking to people about these that people who get it, you know, the scripture tells us, don't, don't throw the pearls before swine. It's like, those are people that don't understand. So don't, don't try to make them understand, especially not when you're, you know, you're believing in something, you're going for something. Now, if you're, if you're teaching someone, that's a whole nother ball game, then, then share with them. But when you are contending for something, You know that it's coming and you are standing in that faith. You are standing in that revelation faith position where you know that you know that you know. You just, you don't have to have the details because the Lord is taking care of the details, but he's delivering on his promise. And then what do you do? You receive. Father, I receive. And then we give thanks. We thank him for what is already happening. So when I you know, when I was waiting for this check and it didn't come, it's like, okay, I know the check is, it, it's due to me. I know I should have it by now. So obviously something's wrong here. So I need to check in what's wrong. And that's the same thing that we want to do. The Lord's promises are always true. He is faithful. He says he will deliver on his promises. So if it's not coming And, you know, it's like, okay, what's wrong? And when we go back and we study the life of Daniel, in Daniel 10, he was praying and it was, you know, he waited 21 days and finally the angel appeared. He came and he said to Daniel, he said, your your prayer was heard at the very first moment, but there were some complications. They had some heavenly fights that needed to take in place. Needed to take place. Some some uh, obstacles in the heavenly realms that held Gabriel up from being there with Daniel. That's the same thing can ha- that can happen to us. The enemy may be holding it up. There may be some circumstances. There's some things that are holding up the prayers or the timing. Maybe maybe a prayer is conditional on somebody else doing something or a certain circumstance happening. So that doesn't mean that it isn't coming. Just like that check. I knew that check was coming, but there were some problems. So I had to look and say, okay, now what is it? And then it still didn't come. It's like, okay, got to go deeper on this one. That's the same way we want to do with our faith. So one thing that I encourage you to do is to think of a time when you knew for sure that something was coming to you and there was a complication and that it just didn't didn't come. But you had the assurance because then when you can think about how you felt in that place of confidence You can use that as your personal example, just like I have my personal example here with that, with that royalty check. You can have your personal example of, you know, how you were to receive something and you had absolute assurance that it was going to come. And so you waited for it. And then when it was to show up, it did. If it didn't show up, then you maybe did a few things to make sure that it would make, you know, help doing your part to take away the obstacles. So this is God's word. This is his truth. Therefore, I say to you, Jesus is saying this. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. That is God's truth. And we need to work on ourselves, work on our faith, get that faith strong, renew our mind to the truths of God so that we can stand in confidence that what he says is already ours, the promises in the scriptures that are already ours, that Jesus made possible because of his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection and his ascension into heaven, those things are already ours. And then we wait patiently, believing that we receive. So use the lesson for today and really think about this. And if you've got, you know, still some doubt, work on that doubt. And so you get to that point that you fully believe, that you become completely convinced 
that what God's Word says is true and it's true for you. Okay, this is Susan Gregory with Your Journey in Faith. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.